Buckeyecast. The Brotherhood, playing for the guy next to you, playing for the team. What's up, Buckeye Nation? You're tuned in to the Buckeye Cast. Buckeyecast. Tradition of Ohio State, we take that serious. These fellas were born and bred in the Buckeye State. Buckeyecast. The people of Ohio, we work every day to make them proud. Visit us at thebuckeyecast.com and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the Buckeye Cast. Buckeyecast. Now here's your host. Joe Warwick. I'm proud to be part of this group. Go Bucks. Hey everybody in Buckeye Nation. Got a new episode here for you getting started. We appreciate you downloading this podcast. We appreciate your loyal listening. And don't forget to check out the Buckeye Cast store at thebuckeyecast.com. We've got some awesome t-shirts up there. Uh, the Silver Bullets t-shirts is one of the favorites. Uh, it's a hot seller right now. Um, but anyway, we've got a wide variety of shirts. And uh, check us out. No shirt is over $35. These are tri blend, soft as shit t shirts. These are awesome. Uh, I personally wear an extra large, but uh, don't hold that against me. Anyway, uh, check out the store and uh, follow us on social media. We're always posting a. Uh, some codes to save some money on the store. Uh, right now, I can give you 20% off your order if you use the code TBCSS20. TBCSS20. Use that code, save 20% on your next order. So, you're going to hear me and Sean just kind of uh, start right into the show and without any real introductions. But uh, enjoy, and we'll talk to you soon. The uh, trap games on the schedule. I, there's a couple for me. Fuck! After losing to Purdue and Iowa, yeah, <laughs> they're all potential traps. <laughs> That's true. FAU week one trap. It, it, that is a trap game. Yep. Yep. Lane Kiffin's putting all his eggs in that basket. I guarantee it. That little prick. He's got Francois. Starting a quarterback. If, he does, if 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 Florida Atlantic were to beat Ohio State, that would be the biggest win in their career. It'd be what oh. puts Lane Kiffin finally on the map. Yeah. Was he on the map before? Was he ever on the map? I don't know. With the, with the, with those short gigs at USC and Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he he never sat still enough he, he, to be he, he, on the map. You know. And then he was off the map, and but if he can do something like this for FAU, he, I feel like he can salvage his career. Guess what? I say, fuck you, man, Kevin. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Tell your Ohio State coach you're a douche. You're a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. If Ohio State ever hires you, I'll rethink it all. But right. Yeah. So we're just kind of rolling here. The show's started. Um, Thank you for joining us, folks. We appreciate you and your listenership. Uh, don't forget to visit. We do. The, yeah, we do. Believe it or not, uh, don't forget to visit the site, thebuckeyecast.com. We got some awesome shirts up there, Sean. I'm going to send you one. I'm going to get you a big fruit basket. Um, now, you like you want a shirt or a hat? I want a shirt and a hat. Both. Jesus. All right, what what uh, style you like? The silver hey, bullets. Man, I'll take what I can. I'll take what I can get. I'm working on a new design. Like bullets. Yeah, I'm working on a new design uh, called BIA. Don't give, flat brim, don't, don't give me that flat brim shit though. Not what these kids are wearing. I like to like a little curve on my bill. Yeah, you like a little duck bill. That's right. Oh, I see you're clanging some ice cubes together over there. Whoops. <laughs> I, thought I was trying to be quiet. Like any good podcast. <laughs> if you're not drinking, you're not doing it right. Yeah, I read a couple of our reviews up on uh, iTunes last week. I, I completely missed them. They were from like freaking August yeah, of no, last I'm year. I, I, I've been through the store... I've been through the store. I haven't bought anything yet, but no, you're getting some sweet swag listed up there, and uh, yeah. I do got to get my hands on it because I was on vacation and I left like three 
shirts somewhere, man. I can't find like three comfortable, nice hangout lounge around t-shirts. Yeah, and I need some new shit. Do you like a good tri blend, or are you a cotton guy? I like the tri blend. Well, the cotton. I mean, it depends on the situation. Yeah. You know, I think there's a time and place for just about everything. Yeah. And you know, I try not to discriminate against tri blends and cottons and acrylics and yeah. oh, that's paint <laughs> <laughs> with the roller there <laughs> painted up nicely yeah I, I got a most of these shirts are all tri blends and they are the softest shit i've ever worn man i got the silver bullets one in a dark gray shit the logo pops off there looks really good but anyway folks uh ch- check out the site there is nothing no shirts are over $35. That's our ceiling. We're never going to raise prices. That is our ceiling. I'm making very little off of these shirts. I just want to spread the love to Buckeye Nation and hopefully turn a small profit. (laughs) But anyway, uh, thank you for joining us again. Um, Follow us on all social media. And uh, we're just going to kind of free ball it tonight. It's a Friday night free ball, Ooh. and uh, see what happens. We're going to talk about some of the most recent stories in Buckeye football, uh, some recruiting, and just the latest latest topics floating around. Maybe I'll ask Sean if he's okay with Herb uh, coaching at USC. <laughs> For, I'll foreshadow, I'm not. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, like I mentioned, I was reading some of our uh, a couple reviews last year, or from last year, and and uh, dude, a couple guys said it's like hanging out with uh, my friends at the bar, and that's the kind of podcast we want to convey, because that's really what we're doing, right? Pretty much, you know, about twelve hundred miles apart, but yeah, here we are, drinking drinks in hand, talking Buckeye football. You're not going to get a heavily better. edited podcast here, folks. We're, there's very little production value involved in this show. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, you might want to sh- shuffle on down the road yeah, and find another try one. Try to keep the production cost low. That's right. We got we got uh, low That's overhead. Right. Or, buy, or buy a shit ton of those t-shirts <laughs> yeah. if you have some production value. <laughs> yeah. But. yeah. Start cranking out some shirts, maybe we'll be all right. I can come up with a new fucking intro song every week. And we can make this a... a more- <laughs> there you go. Anyway, we're just going to shoot the shit about some topics. Um, Buckeye recruiting seems to be doing okay. Uh, was there any doubt? <laughs> no, no, there was doubt. There was definitely doubt. I mean, yeah. he's the finder of talent, and the you know ki- kids wanted to go to him. Hmm. Um, some of that doubt was already herb at all the you know all the bullshit they tried to throw on herb early in the season last year and and whatnot w- would have made the the weak recruits leave Buckeye Nation um, they stayed found out herb was getting getting out of there they still stayed and we, we got some this class of freshmen right now I do not consider urban Myers class I consider them Ryan Day's class so I know he's just coming into his first year but bullshit he ran the team it was this. These kids are coming there for Ryan Day slash Johnson. Um, but Zach Harrison and Garrett Wilson are Zach Harrison and Garrett Wilson are two of the hugest gets, and those to me are Ryan Day gets. Yeah. Those aren't Urban Meyer gets. Um, or Urban Meyer set the table for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ryan Day, I think, came in and, and proved and and with Heartline getting in the mix that hey man, we're we're young, exciting. I don't know. I, I like the vibe at Ohio State right now. It's just yeah. it's young, exciting. I feel like people want to be there. Why wouldn't you want to be there? Right. Um, you know, I'm looking at these new recruits for the next class, and why wouldn't you want to go play for Brian Hartline and Ryan Day and Coach mm-hmm. Johnson? And I mean, yeah. I I guess I it's probably my scarlet colored glasses. Maybe Clemson and Bama got the same thing with with the coaching staff they have. Um, I only know really of their head coaches uh, you know i know all the buckeyes coaches that go out there and put in the work and 
mm-hmm. man, these guys do a great job. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say, but th- I, I, I was I was a little surprised at the level of recruiting. Yeah, just that it maintained. I, I was yeah. worried about this year, and then we we got a bunch of offensive guys, and right. then I'm like, oh shit, man, we got no D. You know, we changed the whole D. I mean, and the D is a bit of a crapshoot. But you know what? I think I think the program's so strong. Uh, I I think the offense is so strong. You're getting high caliber kids that are going. And and you're going to attract some of those high caliber defensive kids as well. And I'm I, I was a little bit concerned on the defense side of the ball about a month ago, two months ago maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, those, those concerns have been put to bed for me. Yeah, I would say um, I am surprised at the level of the of the quality of the class thus far. I mean, we're looking at what are we number three right now? Number probably number four. We're going to be number three once they uh, re-rank everybody and and some guys get a bump. So we'll probably jump ahead of LSU. But and how the hell is LSU in a top five recruiting? I don't. Somebody needs to look into that. That's a side note. Remind me later. That fucking guy that was stealing money from the hospital and sending it to uh, LSU uh, football players. We need to talk about that story. Nobody else in the country is talking about it, so we better. We're gonna shed a light on some shit tonight. So, there you uh, go. but I, I think the quality of this recruiting class is on par with an Urban Meyer class, and uh, you could say almost better than an Urban Meyer class in some ways. Yeah, the defensive side of the ball needs to definitely pick up. But look at these guys we've gotten. Uh, Clark Phillips. This guy is a, a beast. Four star. Uh, this guy, one of the top yep. corners in the country, you know, his position, yep. man. I mean. Clark Phillips will be a pro yep. um, three years after he walks into Columbus. Yeah, and he, have I, you, you seen yeah, his interview? Yeah. His interview after he committed? He's fucking, I did not. Oh, man. He has, like, charisma. He's, he mm. looks at the camera when he's talking. The guy, the kid is, like, polished. Speaks well, that's well. What you want. You, for for a cornerback, you gotta have some confidence out there. It's like, man, yeah. you know, you can't be a little timid. Like, um, I love it. I'm gonna go watch that now. Yep. I love it. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, send you the link. Um, well, well, but what's the deal? I keep hearing about this. Uh, so we got Clark Phillips, stud. Mm-hmm. What about this Elias Ricks? Is he a potential flip? He is. Yeah, he's a current LSU commit. And he has been for a while, but uh, he's transferring to IMG uh, High School this year for his senior year, and he's going to be on the same defense with Legend Cavazos. So, you know, he's going to be... Is he Legend or Lejean? Legend. Just a fancy way to spell ah. Legend. <laughs> and that dude's straight up balls. Yeah, he's Yeah, he's been recruiting big time for the Buckeyes. Um, he's got he's got a shitload of confidence too back there. Yeah, which, which it, I love it. His thing is is weird to me how they have him playing safety in high school, but Ohio State has already promised him he can play corner. Usually it's the other way around, you know. I didn't I didn't hear that. Yeah, so we'll see uh, we'll see what happens with uh, Elias Ricks, but uh, definitely take him in a heartbeat. We can bring in some corners since we didn't get any corners in last year's class. We need to stock up there. I know after having that sweet haul of Bakuda, Wade, and Sheffield like three years ago, we've been a little bit dry. I know we actually had a good class with Seven Banks and Marks Williams. Actually, Marks Williams might have been those guys. We got some other good guys, but I feel there's not a ton. And then Last year, that kid yeah. out of Florida, love that kid. Can't wait for him to go on field. Who's that? Tyreek Johnson. Who's that kid out of Jacksonville? Tyreek Johnson. Yeah. That was two years ago. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, uh, yeah. We didn't get any any corners out of last year's 2019 class. Um, so yeah, zero. Well, yeah. that was a small class too. Yeah, it was only like 17 kids, but that- still, it's still a priority. I mean. 
So we're looking at uh, the four star. But, but those kids now are all on campus. The nineteens, right? yeah. Those twenty nineteen kids, yeah. Yeah, there might be a couple stragglers that haven't arrived yet, but um, yeah. Well, uh, if you ain't arrived yet, then you ain't playing. You're probably not gonna make it at high state, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, I saw they they announced some of the uh, numbers for some of the new guys that just arrived, like Harry Miller and shit. But um, interested in uh, the defensive side of the ball for sure. Got to pick up recruiting there. I realize that when you take a sledgehammer to the staff and fire everybody except Larry Johnson, that it's going to be a challenge. But um, got to get we got to get some good linebackers stocked up. And definitely the secondary. Um, we're looking at losing uh, some major players on on the def- defensive side of the ball. You know, Chase Young, Okuda. I just heard on uh, that that whole back end. Yeah, I mean, Arnett, Fuller. I feel we're. I feel right now we're, we we've got some depth. We got some depth up front, and we got some depth in the linebacker room. But that's because not everybody's going to be leaving. Right. Yeah, Young is going to be leaving, and but on the back end, Arnett's gone. Yeah, Luda's probably gone. Yeah, Miller's Arno- definitely gone. Yep, Arno- dude. There's an outside chance. Sean Wade's gone. Sure. Sean Wade was balling out hard last year. Yep. He was the best kid on the back end at late in the season. Yeah. Maybe maybe Brendan Brendan White was showing up a little bit, but Sean Wade had some. Nice plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by the end of the year in that Michigan game, he fucking was lighting people up, man, locking people down. Um, really. So happy. If, if they're all gone, who? If, if they're all gone, who are our guys? I, who who yeah. are our starting cornerbacks? Tyree Johnson. I'm. We're going to see Justin Open, Seven Banks, Williamson will have right. another year, right? But isn't that Williamson working in that bullet position now? I don't think he is. No, he's still at corner. Uh, I I uh, I think it was I don't just know. It's confu- that that bullet's confusing me a little bit. It's yeah. It's just Brendan White and Jocelyn Went. Those are the only safeties working in at that. Jocelyn uh, Went. How did I bring up his name? Jocelyn Went's a beast. Right. Yeah, he he had some up and down moments when they were trying to decide who the best safety was <laughs> last year, but um, yeah, they. They got to pick up the defensive side of the ball, man. I mean, we're going to have to see a rotation of corners, you know, to get these young guys up to speed so they're ready next year, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think we see seven banks on the field in some kind of rotation. Uh, I hope we see Tyreek Johnson. I really like him, and we haven't seen oh. shit from him. Oh, and I and I and I apologize, for Amir Reap. Amir. Oh, Reap. yeah. Yeah, let me see some of that kid. Yeah, he might be. I think he's at safety. So right now, right now it's good, but those guys are. Right now, I I feel like we're really good back there. For the back end, we got tons of dudes, but in a year or two from now, who do we got? We need to fill up. Yeah, that's why we got to see some some young guys in the rotation this year coming up, you know, so that we're ready in twenty twenty. So, yeah, uh, and some of the defensive commits we need. We need this Court Williams out of Cali. Uh, he's he's a heavy Buckeye lean, just a matter of time. Uh, he's a stud outside linebacker. What is he? Outside linebacker, four-star um, from John, St. John's Bosco. He, this kid ran a fucking 4.64. Well, he's got a 39-inch vertical. Jeez. Well, I'd like to see what that Cody Simon that we got this year. Right. I know uh, what he, he's a four star. Mm-hmm. That dude is a stud. Welcome aboard, Cody Simon. Yep. That that dude's got all the skills. I can't wait. And then we got that. Uh, we got another kid out of Maryland in this class, outside linebackers. We got a couple. I'm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's keep that train going. And then you still got like Brown. I mean, we still got. Browning and Taraja and yeah. uh, who's that kid out of Toledo? Dallas Gant. 
can't. Right? That that room is not. That room's pretty nice. Yeah. It, yeah. It, you still need to get some numbers, though. I know we're not hurting there, but uh, got to bring in some some people in every class at, at linebacker. Um. Oh, we got. Uh, Safety, we got Lathan Ransom. He's a heavy Buckeye lean, four stars. Oh, I see that. We need we need that kid. Come yeah. on, Lathan. Yeah, I think we're in good shape there. there. There's really two kids that I want bad, and it's Lathan, and it's Bijan. Yeah, both are heavy Buckeye leans as of right now. Uh, Bijan's announcing like August second, I believe. So. Those are the last two keys of the puzzle. And then, yeah, get some other, I mean, love to get a couple other quality guys that are out there, but they're probably long shots at this point. But then, you know, fill up the roster. Yep. Or don't. And take a huge class next year because next year's class is starting out real nice. <laughs> yeah. Kyle McCord called it. Uh, he said that... Uh, Mookie Cooper and Bijan will be the next two Buckeyes. And we got half of them so far. Good. Can, I don't know if we can, if this is a good place to take it a little side. Sure. No, but with Julian Fleming, yeah. Mookie Cooper, <laughs> B. Scott Jr., and Jackson Smith, are you fucking kidding me? You see some of those highlights from the That's opening? That's ridiculous. My God. I did. I Kind of, I. What is with these? These guys are, these, these guys are freaks. Yeah, yeah. All of them are, are built to come in right now. The top hundred. Yeah. 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 I, I would say maybe I, Mookie I'm might not be. I'm wondering if. Uh, Good. Think Mookie, what? I, he might be the one that's not I quite ready. I think Mookie might come in. Well, I, I think Mookie might, uh, with his size, might go to that H back. Mm -hmm. uh, position, I think that suits him and suits him well. I think it'd be a fucking stud there. What they got him listed on? I'm on uh, two four seven right now. They got him listed at five eight and a half, a buck ninety three. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I hate to tackle that freaking load. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's our Rondale five, Moore. Five eight and a half. Yeah, he's like Rondale Moore at Purdue. There's no way to get lower than that guy. And, and he's got speed, and he's got, I mean... He's built like Mookie a running back. Cooper is a... I, I was reading in there uh, on that opening, they're like, because Mookie wasn't on the team with uh, Fleming and them, that the team Mookie was on, when he came out, the offense just did nothing. He mm -hmm. was like the only playmaker on that team. Yep. Yeah, that, this this wide receiver room is insane. Um so credit to Ryan Day's oh offense gosh. and to Brian Hartline. Uh, Hartline and Halfley are two of the top recruiters in the country right now and uh, the top two in the Big Ten for sure. Well, and, and part of it's the situation too, right? I mean, so we just lost, what, three or four receivers to the NFL? Three. Um, after this season, we're going to lose three more mm -hmm. to the NFL. I mean, there's, there's tons of tons of playing time to be found here oh yeah i feel and, for for young receivers so it's heartline it's day's offense and there's maybe not this year but starting next year there's a lot of opportunity i feel a lot definitely uh yeah i, I it's you, you know you're gonna have a rotation so you're not just looking at three starting receivers like uh they had a rotation of six going at one time last year so Guys are going to see the field, and at least one freshman like uh, Garrett Wilson is going to play. You know, so this is going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, he is. To see how these these guys, uh, and and there's going to be injuries, you know, and there's going to be uh, probably a player that's not happy with his playing time or his production and transfers out. So, you know, you can't have too many receivers in this offense it's going to be very interesting though you really can't i mean the, the downside of that is i don't see us getting four top 100 guys 
next year at wide receiver. <laughs> right. Probably only two or three. Sure. But but not four. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. Hats off, Brian Hartline. That's some sick shit. Right. And Ju- uh, that Julian, they're all beasts. Mm-hmm. Julian Fleming is a beast. Guy Scott is a beast. I don't know. It's, I'm excited to see it. I am really excited that I'm, I'm just wondering though, it's so early in the process. We've seen this before. Does, does someone decommit at some point? Yeah. Well, you know, with, with Urban, if, if Urban had four receivers at this point, one of them was going to bail by the time signing day come. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I can't argue with that, but I think. The quality of these kids, though, these kids are like almost you know professional in their mindset, and they're good. I know they're, they're good quality people. So I don't I don't get the vibe of the that typical diva receiver type. These kids seem like they want to work. I well, I think they see what's ahead of them. They're like, okay, look, you go to Ohio State, you go to the league. All you got to do is work. Our coach is a guy that's just out of the league. He knows exactly what they're looking for. Yep. It's set this sets up real nice, real nice. Mm-hmm. As long as we keep winning football games, right? Yep. Exactly. We gotta keep winning. Yeah, and, and back to the running backs. I wanted to touch on uh, Jalen Knighton from down here in Florida. He's from Deerfield Beach. Uh, he, we could be getting both running backs. Knighton's a four star and Bijan's a five star in this class. And I'm hearing yeah. that this class could get up to twenty six or twenty seven kids. We we were talking twenty five like a month ago. Now they're looking at you know, so that means somebody's gonna be transferring out or uh you know, just quitting football together or something on the current roster because we're pretty loaded. <laughs> Do you, at, at some point, do you not look for any more guys? You're like, you know what, I got my team. And, I, and on my practice squad, I'm going to give guys like, uh, who's the guy, Woodkey that just got a scholarship. Mm-hmm. You know, give some of these upperclassmen that are on, you know, that never see the field or whatnot. Give give a few of these guys a scholarship in their last year. And, and don't reach too far, unless you really like the kid. But don't just put a number in there. It's just, it's not worth it to me. Uh, if, you, if you got a good kid, then yeah, bring him in. Mm-hmm. But to me, yeah, I, I love when they give these upperclassmen a scholarship for a year. You know, it's not going to hurt you down the road with scholarships. Um, but it's like, a, hey, thank you, man, for working your ass off and making us a better team. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, who else was I going to touch on? Uh, we brought in, we got Cody Simon, the four-star linebacker. Got Darion Henry. He's been a heavy Ooh. Buckeye lean. Uh, the D lineman out of Cincy. And don't look now, but Cincy is starting to become a Buckeye town. <laughs> I know. Yeah, typically, the Irish fare pretty That's well not, in the Queen I City. A little worried about that. Mm-hmm. And, in Kentucky, once in a while, reel something off or some. Yeah. yeah. But I, I was a little worried about Darion Henry, and from one, everything I read about Darion Henry, my namesake, my brother, <laughs> this kid is rated two. Like my friends up in Michigan here say, three star kid out of Ohio is like a four star kid anywhere else. So Darion's a four star here. Yeah. Darion's a stud. He's he's a high high four star five-star. Darian Henry's going to make plays at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. I promise. For sure. Yeah, uh, and we got, uh, like we mentioned, Latham Ransom's a heavy Buckeye lean. We got Cooper in the fold. Jalen Knighton and Bijan. Um, this class is, <laughs> unfortunately, it's going pretty heavy offense, but uh, I think this this uh, these last few spots are going to be heavy defense. Um Specifically with Ransom, the safety. Hopefully, we get Ricks, the corner. He said that Ohio State is looks like a nice spot for him. 
uh, at one of the. Isn't there another D tackle like in the pool? already committed? Somewhere? Yeah, I'm on. No, not committed. Uh, and, and a and a top kid. Hold on, looking at Ohio State's prospects right now. Tricks. Are we done? Is Kendall Milton? He's gone. He he messed with us tomorrow. What? I haven't heard anything about him lately. Vernon Broughton. We got Vernon Broughton. Okay. Oh yeah, Kendall Milton's a. Okay. They got uh, seventy. George Lean. Yeah, there's this D tackle out of Texas that when you click on the prospects, it shows us as warm, but it's 72% Texas, 9 A&M. Mm-hmm. And that's it any. Right. Yeah. But, you know, our D-line is pretty thick right now, man. Uh, D-line recruiting has been... Yeah. Again, like Heartline has Officer Johnson. He runs some talent through there. No shit. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, There's another I'm looking at right now. A D-tackle out of North Carolina, out of Charlotte. Mm-hmm. That we're still in the mix for. We met and we got what, two guys out of Charlotte. You know, good... This is crystal ball. Uh, North Carolina. Why the... If Buckeyes want you, why the hell are you going to go play football in North Carolina? Yeah, fucking Mac Brown. It do, it don't make sense. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, got to finish up strong on the defensive side of the ball with this class. We'll see how things finish up. Other than Bijan and Jalen Knight, and, uh, I think we go. We should go defense. Um. Jeez, I forgot Fleming ran a four four five at the at the opening laser timed. <laughs> yeah, and he's six two two and he's six two two hundred. Right. Is that any good? <laughs> Jeez. Oh. He still has to play his senior year of football? <laughs> you imagine yeah. trying to cover these kids? Fuck. <laughs> no thanks. And let's not forget my Paris Johnson Jr. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see this guy. Number one tackle in the country. Back to back years, number one tackle in the country for Ohio State. And, yeah, we got some boys there. Yeah. And that Luke Weipler. Mm -hmm. I think we might have went back to back, or maybe we skipped the year number one center in the country. Yeah. Yep, looking good. Um, anything else we need to cover on the recruiting front? On this class, I, I was happy to see uh, Cameron Martinez, athlete out of uh, Muskegon, Michigan. I think he might be rated yeah. a little bit low. I agree. Um, just because he played in, in Michigan. I think this kid's the baller. And anytime that you're stealing kids like him mm-hmm. and the guy below him, uh, Greg Tutant out of De La Salle, which is a powerhouse up here. You know, mm-hmm. I love, I mean, these are, if these kids don't go here, they're going to Michigan or Michigan State. So welcome aboard, boys. Yeah. Yeah, we brought they're, in, we did. Four or five stars to me, for sure. Yeah. Look at this fucking receiver room, dude. Let me read these names off to you. In 2021, the receiver room could look like this. Chris Olave, Jalen Harris, Elijah Gardner, Jalen Gill, Cam Babb, Garrett Wilson, Jamison Williams. A lot of people forget forget about Jamison Williams. Keep that name in mind. Then Julian Fleming, oh, G. Scott, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Jaden Ballard. Don't forget he's the 2021 commit we got out of Maslin. That's a fucking loaded ass room, dude. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the best of the best. Mm-hmm. I mean, this. You know what though? Alave came in and showed out. Alave was one of our lower ranked recruits. Yeah. 
That was a Ryan Day yeah. special. He picked him out. Ryan Day did? Yeah. Yeah, he he was out there watching uh their quarterback. It uh who the hell is their quarterback? Like San Diego area. Yeah. Uh so anyway, and he he saw Olave and uh it's like you know recognize he's talent. small he's small but he's fast yeah he's got good hands so yeah we're losing kj and uh cj saunders austin mack ben victor we could yeah i mean i, I think that Jalen gill that you railed off i think he'll be more of the well i don't know i I'm curious to see what this offense is like i guess it'll be a lot like last year mm-hmm less yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see how they get Justin Fields uh, comfortable early on, you know. Is it going to be a lot of crossing routes, short intermediate throws, you know? Uh, I don't know, or do, or, do you, or do you just put uh, J.K. Dobbins on a Heisman campaign and run it 35 times a times a game with them and there ain't nobody mm-hmm. rushing you man <laughs> well from that you got the same problem with running the quarterback or running jk to death is who's behind him depth is the problem with those two positions man well unless crowley shows up i'm not sure teague is the guy I love Teague. I love everybody, but as the bruiser, I, I I'd go with I'd go with Teague and uh, run DMC combo. Yeah, yeah, I could live with that. In I that guess. backfield. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, my and point. I, I love me some JK. Yeah, but yeah, that that I know what I got. I know what I got with JK right, and I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like I might like the next thing. I might even like it better, but I don't know yet. <laughs> exactly. So, but as of right now, what going on? What we do know is depth behind the quarterback and depth at running back are two big concerns. Because you know, if your number one guy goes down, it could be a big problem. You know, for any significant amount of time. Uh, but, here with our depth of running back because I've got J.K. Dobbins, a bona fide mm-hmm. stud in there. I've got T. Demario McCall, McCall that's, you know, been in the program for a while. At quarterback, I've got, I mean, the depth, I don't even, I don't even have a starter that's really played much. Mm-hmm. I mean, He played garbage. He didn't play meaningful minutes that much, man. No. And now you're in the big time. And yeah, we got some smaller schools to start out, but I, I think our schedule is going to be good for Justin Fields. Yeah. I feel like the front half of it is workable with the talent we got. The back half is a grinder, man. Yeah. And hopefully he finds his way those first few games because the back half is a fucking grind. Sure is. Yep. Yeah, Gunner and Chugs haven't had much experience. They've they've been in systems, you know, and but they've never been the man. So right, you know, you're gonna lead the. But we've had others do it. Guyton, Barrett. Yep. Twelve gauge. They all came in and did it mm-hmm. because there's so much talent around you. It. I mean, who would want to be a quarterback at Ohio State? Yeah. So, yeah, um, how about, uh, you, you got to answer me this. How, I, I know you're, you're, Sean lives in Detroit, folks, and you got to explain how Michigan is getting all this national hype. It seems to me, this is my point of view, and, Obviously, I'm using my Buckeye binoculars, but from my point of view, it looks like when everybody says somebody, some team is gonna uh, is in line for the national championship and gonna win the conference and all that, that's just setting them up to fail. That's like the the announcer jinx, right? So what? 
Well, right. why is Michigan getting all this love nationally? Well, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give tell you my take. And again, maybe I'm up here listening to too much local sports radio and shit like that. Uh, listen to too many Michigan fans, which I don't talk to many Michigan fans. So, because um, if we talk about football, that they, they pretty much shut it down pretty quick. Um, thing I must talk about. Sure. I saw their I saw their last running back that got kicked off the team over at my some baseball training center uh, like a month or two ago. I think I did. I snap you a pic of him. Um, I don't even know what he got suspended for. But anyway, here's the here's the real deal on Michigan. If if you look at those names across the O line, that are mostly juniors and seniors, and you and if you've been following recruiting, you know all their names. They were all they were all real good kids. Um, so you've got a veteran offensive line. You've got some really good older receivers right now. Uh, Michigan's got what that Donovan people who out, you know, always kind of had a giant heart on for and was hoping he'd be a Buckeye. Yeah. You got Nico Collins and Tariq Black. That is, I'm, I mean, look, we can hate these assholes, but those are three talented kids. Um, so they got the O line. They got these wide receivers. Shea Patterson, you know, he's got all the hype in the world. But even looking at their games last year, um, he, I don't feel he throws a great ball. I feel like he's got really good receivers, mm-hmm. but half the time they'd be open and have to like dive for a ball and their knees would be down and oh. stuff. It's like if he if he could have hit him in stride, I don't think he's that accurate. I think he's no. a little bit overhyped in that category. Um. But the talent's there, right? I mean, coming out, this kid was a freaking stud. Um, we'll see. If if Shea Patterson is good and they're a supposed new offensive coordinator that's going to spread them out, it's like super spread guy and whatever, we'll see. Um, everyone up here seems to think, like, Michigan's new offense is going to look like a, a lot like Ohio State's offense. Um, I don't know that. At running back, they're kind of screwed. But and I think some young freshmen, uh, they got a couple of the older guys that aren't any good. That, like their starter that would have – Karen's gone. She's gone. Um, uh, the guy that got kicked off the team for whatever reason has gone. Yeah, Hig- probably would have been there more than two guys. Yeah. Yeah, Higdon uh, yeah. entered the NFL draft and did not get drafted. <laughs> I think he did catch on as oh. a free agent signee with the Texans. And then uh, maybe you should send her flowers. And Chris Evans, yeah, he's the one that got suspended for the year. And so, yeah, they're sitting on a, a few, uh, yeah. a walk on, yeah, he's, he's, and a, a freshman, right? And the Charbonnet or Charbonneau? Char- or, yeah. Is it Charbonneau or Charbonnet? It's like Joe Joe Charbonneau. Yeah. Remember that out of the yeah, <laughs> the, the annals of baseball. Eighties. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And so, don't squeeze uh, the Charbonneau. There, there is a lot of excitement around that. And to me, you know, to me, everything goes on the on the line. And I think they're going to have a pretty good offensive line this year. Uh, as far as the defensive side of the ball, they lost some talent, obviously, in Bush and Gary. And, and the T-shirt maker. Some other guy, maybe. But they, they still got some kids, and it's a dumb brown defense, even though we carved it up to tune of 62. <laughs> Could have been like 76, <laughs> but we – so, but their defense is going to be solid. Um, I, again, I think Don Brown's problem is – plays works when your players are better than the other teams mm-hmm. but when you play Ohio State's and Alabama's and that your players aren't better than those guys and right. and so you want to do all that crazy shit and be so aggressive we'll eat your lunch as we showed it mm-hmm. oh, I love eating lunch but that being said I, I, I Michigan's going to be solid I feel and and on top of that You've got if Harbaugh fucking loses this year to Ohio State and like or has a shitty season, what's it is this his fifth yeah, I think this is fifth year. 
So these are all his kids. Mm-hmm. He's never beaten Ohio State. Now, yeah. Ohio State has a new head coach, a new quarterback, four new kids on the offensive line. Yeah. The defense staff is pretty much all different. If if Harbaugh doesn't win this game, and and to me again, a lot of Michigan kids. Michigan's going to have a really good uh, draft, uh, NFL draft next year. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some kids that go from Michigan, um, but they're not that deep. I mean, yeah, they're really not. Um, and, unless some kids really like step up, but I I don't see it with their recruiting. It's been solid, but it's not Bama, Ohio State, Clemson type level. Yeah. I mean, even though they're ranked pretty high, it's because they always have a shitload of commits. You look right. at the average ranking, and it's exactly it's not that great. Exactly, that, that was the point I was going to make. Yeah, um, like their 2019 class is an average rating of uh, ninety point seven eight nine zero seven eight, which is not that great. I mean, we we crush that. I got one stat that I will throw at you, and I think this is the mic drop. 24-7's top 100 players over the last four recu- recruiting classes, Ohio State had 33, Michigan 7. Dramatic pause. Yeah, 33-7. to seven. That That's all I need to see, dude. I can go back here and look at average rankings and composites and how many five stars did you get. Just... That stat alone tells you the the talent gap, in my opinion. And we saw it on the field well, but, displayed last year. Oh, we did. I mean, Buckeye speed is for real. Um, here's the thing, though, on the flip side. Let me switch to the other Michigan team, Michigan State Spartans. Oh. Um, my feeling on them, I'm really high on Spartans this year, too. They've got a very old offensive line that's got lots of starts. Mm-hmm. They've got Lewerke, who they say has a good shoulder. Last year when we mm-hmm. played them, probably for the last half of the season, Lewerke did not have a good, good shoulder. Right, And I don't know if that... Well, I, I'll lay that partly on D'Antonio. Say, hey, you know, the fucking kid can't throw the ball, man. Get him out of there. And right. it was noticeable to me that the, the kid had no zip on the ball. Mm-hmm. For, like, a lot of games. Right, but it, uh, maybe D'Antonio was that like, and to me, part of it was the work. He's like, "Fuck, I don't want to be hurt. I can kind of throw a football, but I know if I let this other kid in, he's going to steal my fucking spot, and I'm never getting back." Right, and and I think he kind of fought through that because I think that Lewerke is a tough kid. Um, they gave that Lombardi that long haired, you know, <laughs> reminds you of the guy and remember the Titans, uh, Sunshine. His long blonde hair, sunshine. Yeah, sunshine. That that's they Trevor Lawrence. Chance, that's our. Turns, yeah, that turns, Nick, out, turns out sunshine sucks. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, and I, and Michigan State has some receivers too. So pretty much the same as Michigan. They got a good old line coming back. Lewerke, Lewerke looked good the year before this year, and you know everyone was super high on him. I don't know. I don't think he's a world beater, but he could be all right, mm-hmm. uh, just like Shea Patterson, and just like Justin Fields. Frankly, it's a, they're all a little bit question marks to me. Michigan State also has some really good receivers. Um, this Cody White, I think, is a freaking beast, um, and they got the same problem. They don't have a running back either. Same problem as Michigan. It's mm-hmm. Like, who's your running back? I, I, I don't yeah. I don't think they have a difference maker back there, but I think they probably have a good enough O line to, you know, make a guy have some pretty good numbers and blast blast through especially lesser talent. I heard that uh so, they're running a new offense up there. I heard they're going to more of a spread system. Well, I mean the the, the big knock on Michigan State up here is that D'Antonio had like the fucking worst offense. I mean did yeah. Do you watch any Michigan State games? It's hard to watch them. Yeah, when they They're played Ohio State. Disgusting. That was it. <laughs> oh, I watched a few others. In their <laughs> bowl game, they lost like 9-6. to six. I mean, they didn't score a touch. So the Michigan State offense is 
was so disgusting to watch. It just was. And their defense was still ranked absurdly high. And I I got to take my hat off a little bit to them for that. When your offense is that terrible and your defense isn't giving up any yards and it's just it's a total – every Michigan State game is a fucking punt fest, man. It's mm-hmm. Nobody goes anywhere. You get seven yards per possession and fucking punt. They, Michigan State was 125th out of 129 uh, Division One teams last year in scoring offense at 18.7 per game. And then go look at their defense. Yeah. With that offense, then you, you would think their defense would be like, damn, they're on the field all the time because these guys can't put a drive together. And their defense is total studs. And I think it's the Antonio system. Um, because they, they got a couple really good guys, and actually a guy I work with, he had his daughter out at a restaurant the other night, and was it Willicus and Bachi mm-hmm. were there, and took a picture with his daughter, and he's like, those guys were just so nice and so. I don't know. They, he told me those are really good dudes. His daughter was beaming over it. I think Michigan State will have a defense, but I also think this is Michigan. They've got a really old team right now, and this is kind of circling back to my point, is these teams like Michigan State, they can compete with you every three or four years when they get an older class that can ball out, Mm -hmm. Um, but they can't compete on a year-to-year basis. Um, If Michigan, their recruiting's kind of been really shit last two years. If they don't win 10 games this year and get their recruiting back up like it was three, four years ago. It's going to be Sparty being Sparty, middle of the road team for a long time. Yeah. Also, I think Michigan has the potential to do that. So, to me, the pressure on Michigan this year is immense. It is immense. It, look, I will accept first year new coach new quarterback, new four, four new offensive linemen. I expect big things, but if we went 9 and 3, I can accept it. Can Mi- Michigan can't accept going 9 and 3 this year. They can't. It needs yeah. to be 11 and 1, Big 10 championship, beat Ohio State type mm-hmm. of season for them. Right. Well, know. let's look at the let's go to Vegas. Vegas is the, the truth. Um Michigan State. That is the truth. Michigan State over under team wins for the regular season seven and a half. Uh, Michigan. I love that bet over. I would. Yes, I, would, I, I agree. Would lay, yeah. After we're done here, let's lay over the over on that. Okay. And Michigan nine and a half. So who has? Ugh, I. I they they both are pretty equal in the. Do you uh, want me to put my money somewhere? Yeah, I do. In my pocket, I, I would go Michigan State on, on on their over. I'd go Michigan State. Yeah. Um. Michigan. I also if you, if you had a gun to my head, would you take Michigan over under? I, I'll take Michigan over. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I think this. I think Sparty's the easy money. Well, I, I take the Michigan under every year. I've already got my bets placed for this year on the team wins. I got the Buckeyes over, over 10, by the way, and because uh, I don't see them losing two games. Um, even if I, they do lose two, it's still a push. So, But I, I just don't see it happening. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got Michigan under 9.5. I think uh, I, I don't think – they got it going on. I'm I'm really concerned about them depth wise, like you mentioned. Um, I was just going to ask you about this new offensive if, coordinator. If they only if they only win nine games, Harbaugh's on the hot seat next year. You think so? I I if think they that. Win, oh, if they only win nine games this year, because Joe, I'm telling you, this is their best chance. They're, yeah, they're going to lose three. Or, they're going to lose three or four. Really good offensive linemen, and then what the fuck are they going to do against the high state D linemen? I, I just yeah, and they're going to they lose start. Patterson, DPJ could go. 
he'll go and 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 probably uh, Tariq Black or, yeah. or Nico. Collins. They're going to lose some dudes this year. Yeah. So back to Michigan State. The reason I was asking about their new offense is because their new offensive coordinator, supposedly this Brad Salem guy, is supposed to uh, uh, bring in a new look. You know, kind of more wrinkles, more modern offensive concepts, which D'Antonio probably pains him to, to think about these words. <laughs> you know, it's like a fucking ice pick in the eardrum. But uh, have you heard anything about this guy up there? Not a ton. Mostly what I've heard up here on that front is that, oh, Michigan had the worst offense in the country, and instead of firing a bunch of people like any other fucking big program would do, yeah. um, they keep everybody and just rearrange it. Like, oh, you were tight ends coach? Okay, now you're O-line coach. And mm-hmm. you were linebackers coach? Okay, now you're running backs coach. I, I feel like they just, like, flipped the whole deck of cards. Yeah. Dan this- Tony got rid of nobody. This guy might be the – is he a new hire? No, he was a uh, quarterback's coach for the past six years and running backs coach three years prior to that. <laughs> yeah, see that's the big that's the big that's the big dig on that. Yeah. That you you all they did was, you know, shuffle the deck chairs on the Titanic, man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. His he's he was once a head coach at Augustana University in Division Two before he got his break to Michigan State. I think I got a letter from Augustana, you know, so that tells hmm. you how fucking good a football that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I decided to go to Toledo and get a degree. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yet, my thing with Sparty is, just to get my two cents in on these guys, I just look at the recruiting rankings, and I know that D'Antonio has an eye for talent, especially on defense. And he loves to take a three-star and mold him into a four- or five-star player. But you can only do that with so many guys. And with these guys... Exactly. If, with these guys ranked in the 20s and 30s nationally with their classes every year, average ratings in the mid-80s per player, I mean, come on, man. It just doesn't cut it. You know? It's the Jimmys and Joes. No, and, that, and that's why... That, that's that's why D'Antonio has unbelievable success. Success that no one could imagine at Michigan State, right? I mean, who, mm-hmm. who even thinks they're relevant? You know, back in the you know, even though they knocked Cooper's best team out of the oh, God. championship. 98. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to that. Uh. Um, but it's it, it spark and. To me, that's why this year is so big. If, if they don't write it, and a couple of their, the Antonio will build it with his three, two and three star kids, and then when he did that and started having some some success, he started getting some better kids. And Michigan was down, so he started to get you know local kids to like. Eh, I'm going I mean, the word on here. I mean, Michigan might be a more prestigious school, but it's a public university. Sparty's where you want to go, man. That's the party school. Mm-hmm. East Lansing is a good time. Yeah. And Arbor's a bunch of social justice warriors. Uh. So, I don't know. These these kids, they started to go there. Michigan still has that. Are you taking a piss? No. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, D'Antonio is, is set to become... Michigan State's all-time winning as coach here. He's only ten behind. Oh, for sure. He's he's so beloved. Yeah, I don't. For I, sure. I think I've heard speculation that he retires after this year, regardless of how it goes. He's not that old, is he? Ah, uh, you know he had he had like a heart deal. Yeah, some years ago. And you no, know, he's in his sixties. I think early sixties, maybe sixty three ish. Something in there. Here. here he is. Sixty three, yep. He's from Texas. I didn't know that. Born in Texas. Look at his coaching tree, who he learned under. I mean, he's got a nice pedigree. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, I was just curious what kind of info you had on on Spartyville. Um 
So yeah, no, the, the Sparty fans, the Sparty fans are uh, optimistic, no doubt. They, are, they think they got their team. Um, we'll see. I, 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 their deal be good. Mm-hmm. Of course, they changed all the coaches. If they put those good coaches that were on D on offense, maybe their offense is going to be good. And their defense might suck like their offense. Did. <laughs> yeah, their defense. I, again, they didn't, they didn't bring in any new talent, and that was the whole. Yeah. You know, I go on these, you know, uh, M Live and Free Press and offense. They start firing people, man. <laughs> right. Look, what, you want to be a legitimate pro. Oh, fucking Ryan Day! Look what he did. He wasn't even coached last year. <laughs> You know, he was offensive coordinator. He came in and right. took a fucking wrecking ball to the whole staff and brought in dudes that we lit up. You know, so yeah, we'll see how it goes for the, the state up north and the teams up north. Um, I I definitely agree with you on. I on think the, I think that's going to be the three. I think that's going to be the three on our side though in the east. I feel like it's going to be Ohio State, Michigan. Take Ohio State, Michigan, I Michigan State. You, where you think uh, Penn I State? I think those are going to be the, the class of that. Where's Penn State fill in here? Uh, Let me I'm before you answer that sure. here. Sure. I mean, obviously, it's a tough fireman. Yeah. Before you answer okay. that, let me give you Vegas's over under team wins, eight and a half. So one game better than than Sparty, one game worse than Michigan. Nine and a half, eight and a half. I'll seven. go better. I'll, I'll go the. I'll go. I'll go the under on. Ooh. Penn State. Nice. I haven't seen their schedule, but I know they play. Yeah. I'll go the under on that. Okay. Yeah, I can rattle it off real quick. It's. Pretty cupcake schedule, honestly. Uh, the first half, then the back half, starting in the middle of October, gets a little dicey for them. Uh, first six games, well, they could have trouble with Purdue. I would definitely say that. They could have trouble at Iowa. They'll have trouble yeah. with Michigan. They'll have trouble at Michigan State. We've well, seen Indiana give them a run for their money. And then they'll definitely have some trouble in Columbus in the Pitt. end of November. And Pitt plays them, right? Pitt will give them a fucking all they want. Yeah. I never know what to expect with that game. Pitt but, shows up in that game, man. Yeah, they do. So, yeah, I agree with you. I, I would take the under if, if you wanted me to spend $5. I take the under season wins. I see them losing four easily. Michigan, Michigan. Well, I don't. Maybe not Michigan State. I'll go Michigan, Ohio State. I think Iowa beats them, and either Purdue or Pitt. I think the one thing I haven't really put into my analysis as much is the the teams are playing, and I. That's the problem with Michigan State, where I think they're going to be pretty strong. But pull up Michigan State schedule and look at like a, a run that they got to do. Like that's that's going to be tough, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, they got a tough one. That's why their team wins are only seven and a half. Um, they they play at Ohio State, at Michigan, Northwestern, and at at Wisconsin. Dude, Northwestern's beat them the last three years. Yeah, at Wisconsin, at Northwestern. Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah, that that that's easily four losses. Now I see why they arrived at seven that's and a half. Tough. <laughs> right. I mean, and that's I, I think they're a good team. But you know what? If, if their defense is as good as it was last year and their offense can even have a pulse, mm-hmm. um, you know, defense travels. For sure. Yeah, they're, they had, what, number one defense against the run last year, something like 77 yards a game they allowed. Insane. So, I feel I, like they luck can do a lot of, like, bad weather where no offense happens. But Well, yeah, that's their, that's their M.O. The rain gods are on their side. That is their M.O. 
until they come to Columbus and it's fucking sunny. Right. <laughs> they're mutters. They're mutters, yeah. man. And they're mutters a mutter? Their mothers were mutters. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. From what I've been hearing. What Michigan, about our schedule? Oh. I just wanted to say one thing. Michigan's uh, yeah. bullshit message boards have been on fire lately, thinking that they're going to they're going to somehow turn the tide and come back and and beat Ohio State in recruiting this year in the 2020 class. You guys are Oh jeez. That's just dumb. Yeah. You got to be kidding me. I'm looking at their uh their class is ranked 7th right now. They got 22 commits. Um number 2 in the Big 10, but their average rating is 89.42. Jesus, that's not good. Yeah. Uh, Just for comparison's sake. I mean, they've got a sake. couple kids that, that they got a couple kids that we would have wanted, right? We got that um, Jordan Morant at safety. Actually, they're and and that's probably it because they got what they've got the their highest rated commit is uh, a wide receiver. We're good there. We don't need JJ. You think we're okay there? And then they got a. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to be all right there. Then they got this Braden McGregor out of Port Huron, Michigan. I hate Port Huron. I go up there to play some hockey tournaments with my boy. Port Huron's a shithole. So he's probably a tough kid. That kid's probably good. But yeah, that Jordan Morant, I, I would have liked to got him. For sure. Outside of that, um, yeah. I'm good on all these guys. But look at this rating we're at right now. So last year, with only 17 commits, our average rating was a 9187. Okay, that was like, I think that was third or fourth in the country. This year we're at 9188. <laughs> Almost identical. Average rating. And like I mentioned, Michigan was an 8942. Just the the gap in talent. I know those numbers don't sound. And I think we've taken a couple kids. No, they do. I mean, it it it's it's the top end of what Ohio State gets, and then we go out, you know, like D'Antonio or these guys do, and we find these three star diamonds. I'm hoping that kid from Norwalk. That kid looks like a beast. Yeah, so, Trey Larue. Yeah, I hope the trucker shows us something. Be the yeah. first time. Probably the last. Dude's a beast, though. Oh, He's a monster. Yeah. yeah, if if he has the tools, if Stud Coach Studs thinks he has the tools, then fucking sign me up. I'm all for him. I'm gonna be a little skeptical because of the quality of talent he's played against. You know. But uh, yeah, but raw talents, raw talent, and I think that's kind of what you got to look at. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, that's why, that's the, the coach's responsibility is to, you know, decide, you know, after watching this kid's tape, does he have the tools you can work with? Well, and I got to think no one knows better than Ohio State, right? You know, their their coach is like, look, I got a kid down here, man, that's a big dude that's that can play. Take a look at him. If you like him, great. If Nah, that's great too. I'll go to Michigan. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, recently, I've been thinking of is you know Michigan State will come into Ohio and grab a four star, or I mean a sorry a three star. You know that that maybe went to a big school and and uh, or just catches Dino's eye or something. But now you got Luke Fickle doing that at, down in Cincinnati. So in Kentucky as well, they're they're. They've always had a little bit of a presence in Ohio, but and West Virginia and West Virginia tries sure. to poach over there in Southeast Ohio, right? But so you got a lot of guys coming in here and taking some of those guys that would in the past go to Michigan State, you know. So you got a lot of poachers right. coming into Ohio, you know, scraping up these two and three stars, and you know, especially Cincinnati. I, I think. Fickles, that's like his M.O. He was always getting kids that were underrated, 
you know, look at Darren Lees and people like that. Oh, I agree. I mean, and and that's why to me this year is huge for Michigan State. If if Michigan State goes seven and six or seven and five, six and six, that Ohio wealth for them is going to dry up. up. Yep. It relies on the Ohio well, Ohio and Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. Dino's always done and really well it, in the Columbus it, area. Does the, and if Michigan starts doing better, then they're going to start, you know, the, Michigan and Michigan State right now fight for these in-state recruits. Right. They didn't always, but they did when Michigan went down. And, and now it, it seems like Michigan's kind of trajectorying a little more up. If Sparty doesn't get there, doesn't write that ship, they're going to keep going down. If they, Like I said, if they can have a 10 win season, Sparty's going to be all right for a little while. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah next, good... If they have a ten win season this year, they're gonna have a they're gonna have a seven or eight win season next year, probably. <clears throat> yeah. It's a loss of talent. Yeah, they're gonna lose they, they got a whole team. And that's the only time to me Michigan State can compete is once every four or five years they got a senior class that's really playing together. They all know each other. They all know their shit. Mm-hmm. You know, the couple times they beat us, they had those types of teams. Right. And, you know, because Ohio State doesn't have usually a ton of senior-led teams. The turnover there is a lot quicker than is at Michigan State. Yeah. I know we got a couple playing, but there's a, there's not a ton of redshirt seniors and shit on the team. If you're a redshirt senior, you're probably not playing. Mm-hmm. Unless you decided to come back, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't get the hint. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I, I, I can't argue much with Vegas as far as uh, both Michigan teams and their their season wins. Um, like where, you mentioned, where they got Ohio State at uh, ten, and I was just going to pull up Ohio State's schedule real quick just to as a measuring stick here. Yeah, let's um, run. Run through that real quick. Yeah, I got FAU, Cincy, Indiana, Miami of Ohio, Nebraska, Sparty, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Maryland, Rutgers, Penn State, Michigan. Here's my here are my my uh, trap games. Um, not Nebraska. That's not a trap game. I got Northwestern. Really? Yeah, that's not a trap game. We got, uh, let's see, that'll be week five. We were going, we're going through three non-conference teams plus Indiana in the first four weeks. So there's plenty of time. I don't want to hear excuses. Yeah, but, but you're not, but you're not going through Bowling Green. FAU and in Indiana and FAU, Miami, Ohio. FAU. Okay, FAU has nowhere near the talent that Ohio State has. But they also do have some talent. And Purdue also doesn't have the talent that Ohio State does, nor does Iowa. That game scares me. Um, Cincinnati scares me. Cincinnati hasn't beat us in, like, ever. But they're getting these kids. I don't know what what uh, what his team looks like. But you get a bunch of upperclassmen mm-hmm. that puts the game puts together the game of their lives. Right. Since he scares me, well, let I me, of Ohio does not scare me. Let me debunk your FAU idea. Buckeyes are favored by twenty six right. and a half right now. Of course they are. So I'm not worried. I'll take. I'll take the under. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll take, take uh, the points. FAU and the points. Okay. We'll see. Um, okay, so I, I'll, I'll listen to your point about Cincinnati. I, I realize that it's you have to understand it's in the shoe. Um, I, I think they'll give us a ball game. They don't have the spread up for that game yet. 
but I just the thing with those teams, and the, I'll be a realist on it, is they they will give us a ball game for a half, mm-hmm. and then they typically just can't hang. It's a talent gap. It's a major gap in talent. It's major a cr- gap. crevasse. Indiana, same deal. Uh, they don't really have anybody. Indiana. No, Indiana's got either is going to have a either a pretty solid offense or defense. I can't remember which it is. But <laughs> Indiana scares me. Indiana always plays us down the fucking wire. Yeah, but they were they were Indiana two and seven last year in conference. Yeah, but and, and every single team was afraid to play them. They are not as bad. You are what your record is, and I'm still afraid of them. They are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. Um, other than that, though, dude, I, I'm going to give you my opinion on this schedule. I say FAU, big win. Cincy, uh, I'll go 14-point win, win, maybe 21. <laughs> Indiana, four-touchdown win. Miami of Ohio, five-to-six-touchdown win. At Nebraska, Miami of Ohio is our is our Miami of Ohio is our only complete gimme mm-hmm. outside of Rutgers. Okay, all right, that, that makes you can mail it. In, you can mail it in, if you're going to mail it in any time on day. Mm-hmm. Do it against Miami of Ohio or Rutgers. Those are guarantees, right? So, but, right now the spread is six and a half. At Nebraska. So, I think we win that one. Dude, I I hate going out that way, man. Right. We've not done well. You get out there to Iowa, Nebraska, mm-hmm. out there in the plains, <laughs> you see a bunch of corn, and our boys can't play. They yeah. can't play in Purdue, can not play in Nebraska, and I, I worry about that. Or Iowa, I worry about that Nebraska game. Mm-hmm. You don't? Well, why don't you worry about that? Because it's not in being the same quarterback. They got Frost. Yep. Yeah. I know they gave Frost us a ball game. Guy. They gave us a ball game in Columbus last year. I get it. But I think this defense is going to have four weeks to get ready. And I think they are they got that, that game circled on the schedule because that's the first true test, in my opinion, where a, they're playing a tough offense. And it's not... The other reason it's not a trap is because it's not sandwiched in between two tough games. We got I realize we got Sparty the following week. But I think they got a they're going to go out with a week by week basis, not looking ahead, especially on defense. Um, we'll worry about Sparty. Sparty's coming into Columbus anyways, so it's not like it's back-to-back road games or something like that. That would be a different story. My trap game is at Northwestern on a fucking well, of Friday night. Well, assuming you, uh, assuming you beat Nebraska, assuming you beat Nebraska and Sparty back to back, and then go to Evanston. I'm thinking about going to that game actually. Oh, good call. I'm, I'll fly up there and meet you. All right, because uh, yeah, we're we got to look into that. I'm seriously, okay. thinking about going to the. That should Evanston be an easy ticket to get, honestly. Those Northwestern games have I mean, never yeah, sold the, out. Well, d- well, depending on how good they are. Yeah. The stadium only holds like 35,000, though. <laughs> That's like, true, yeah. It's like going to fucking Columbia. It's stadium. garbage. <laughs> it is. Like going to Maslin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me let me. Uh, and then and then you and then you got Wisconsin at, right after that. I mean that's a four that's a four game little stretch there. Nebraska, Michigan State, Northwestern, Wisconsin. Yeah, that isn't an easy four game run. I got you here. Buckeyes are favored by thirteen and a half versus Michigan State. Wisconsin favored by nine. Uh, they don't have the. Uh, Northwestern game up. Yep. So those are the spreads as they have them so far. Um, But the reason I I had Northwestern as a trap is because, A, it's away 
a night game, a weird day of the week on a Friday, which I got after two after two tough teams and sandwiched between. What's oh, a Friday? Yeah, it's a Friday night game. That's a major issue with me. First of all, oh. I realize high school football may not be a big deal around the Chicago area, but in Ohio, it's fucking right. like the lifeblood <laughs> of most towns. So, uh, yeah, it is. So, and we all know that coming from Ohio, but these fucks, I don't know, at the, in the Big Ten office there in Chicago, I don't know what the hell they're thinking with these Friday night games, especially in the middle of October, man. That's like everybody's at high school games. So you're just taken away from those audiences, and I think it's bullshit, especially a quality game like that. Ohio State. That is a dumb move. You know? Putting Ohio State, it's that not like it's fucking move. Maction, you know? Two Mac teams, I get it. But Ohio State, right. you know, a national brand. Dumb, get me fired up. Um, side yeah, note. Yeah, that's... Uh... Side note, do you remember um, those test tube kamikazes we used to get at the club? At like uh, Asylum or My Place Rocks with girls right. who walk around? I do. With the test tubes, you know? And... I, I've been doing vodka on the rocks with um, a squeeze squeeze a little bit of lemon. It tastes just out of like a test those. Tube? Yeah, it tastes just like this shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't do it out of test tubes, but I'm tempted to go get some. <laughs> I just need need a, a girl to walk around with those, like the belt, you know, with the holster and shit. The test tubes. Anyway, sorry. Um, I. I'm just going to tell you right now. I got Ohio State going, well, it's a little early to predict, but. That's what we do. <laughs> I, I, I'm unsure. But I, I got Ohio State losing the game, like 11 and 1. Mm. And the game I got them losing is in that stretch from Michigan State or from Nebraska to Wisconsin. To Wisconsin is, uh. is where Ohio State loses a game. Okay. I don't know where, but it's in that. But it's in there. So you don't see a trap game with Penn State coming up before Michigan? No, after Rutgers and then Columbus, we're going to be ready for Penn State. I think we're going to start rallying then. I think uh, you know we're going to go Maryland. It's going to give us a little bit more problem than we like. And when we're pissed off, we're going to beat Rutgers like 70-0. to zero. Mm-hmm. And then... And Penn State's going to roll into town. We're going to fucking pants those guys. Hmm. And and we're going to be rolling high into Ann Arbor and fucking do like we did last year. All right. Here's a little curveball. I'm not sure you noticed this. We got a bye week right between, right in the middle of that tough oh, road. I didn't. Michigan State and Northwestern, there's a bye in between those two. Oh. So. That's nice. That's timely. Okay. That's a big deal. Then we got another one after Wisconsin, but that is timely. We have two buys. Yeah, it's a, one of those fucked up schedules. Yeah, we got like two weeks between buys. Well, that's perfect. After we beat Wisconsin. Yeah. You got Maryland coming up. You can spend like a, a full week preparing for Michigan. Right. And then get into your Maryland game plan. And r- same with Rutgers. I wouldn't be wasting all that two weeks after on, Wisconsin. On Maryland on and Rutgers? And <laughs> Maryland and Rutgers. <laughs> you don't think they need to, to spend a little extra time in the fucking film room? <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd be in that film room I'm watching Penn State and Michigan games. Yeah. Like Herb says, if you respect the rivalry, you think about it every day. You you focus on it every day. Three sixty five. Did you read about that uh, speech you just gave a couple weeks ago when they handed out the last uh, gold pants? No. I was Eleven Warriors has the article. Uh, somebody either like video got video of it and. 11 Warriors uh, transcribed everything that Herb said. And that's basically the article is just uh, talking about um, uh, T-shirts and guarantees coming from up north. And 
uh, how uh, talking to the players, how you kick that that ass like you should and like it's never been kicked before. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Check that out on Eleven Warriors. But I'm done with that. I love that uh, Herb had. That's the way you respect a rivalry. This is a quote. These room quoting Urban Meyer. Then you outwork them and you kick that ass like it's never been kicked before. Yeah, check that out sometime. You work it every day. You don't shoot your mouth off. So you got the Buckeyes at eleven and one. I got the Buckeyes going uh, twelve and zero. And probably facing Northwestern again in the uh, Big Ten championship game. I don't think Wisconsin gets there. Um, they don't have what it takes to win that division. Um, uh, they always got hogs, but that's it. Northwestern got that uh, Clemson transfer. Right, the five star Hunter, mm-hmm. or not Hunter? Um, the fuck's that kid's name? Anyway, let's. I wanted to check Wisconsin's team wins here on Bet Online. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Shit, they're not listed. All right. Really? Yeah. For some reason, they don't have them up. So, I, I think anyway. I think Northwestern so wins the were, rest, right? You were starting on Urban Meyer. Yeah. And I think we have something to talk about about these rumors about Urban Meyer. Oh yeah. So, um, uh, Zach Smith's podcast. If anybody hasn't checked it out yet, you, you definitely should. He's got some great inside, you know, behind the scenes stories. He talks a lot of junk about Ed Warner. And how Ed couldn't call plays, um, he would he would hold the fucking play sheet over his mouth, and Zach was actually calling the plays, and uh, Tim Beck was chiming in and helping out there too, and uh, Irv of course, but um, anyway, uh, so Zach has this anyway he has a friend that that must be a mailman because he's gotten a tip that. Urban Meyer and USC have been exchanging certified letters. So my question to you, Sean, is what would your feeling be if uh, Urban Meyer got back into coaching as I think he will? I will be highly pissed off and my opinion of Urban Meyer will drop dramatically. Okay. Because Urban didn't fucking leave this job from what he said and his wife said mm-hmm. and everyone else said because of Zach Smith and that all bullshit. Right. He left because he has a cyst on his brain that when, when he's competing causes him too much pain and he can't go on. So if, if if Urban were to leave and coach USC, I would think, well, Urban, it wasn't because you had, because you're a fucking liar and you ran away from a fucking challenge mm-hmm. and you ran away from adversity. And appreciate everything Urban's ever done. He's a hero in my eyes. And and frankly, I mean, this is just both to speak. I I don't. I've actually got money on it with some coworkers. Urban doesn't coach again. It would be, you know, it, it would be at Ohio State if Urban coaches again. Would be my thought. Like a, like a bat Barry Alvarez type of situation. Like say Ryan Day didn't work out or something or other, and you know, five years from now. You needed an interim head coach, and all right, Herb, you run it, like Alvarez did there mm-hmm. in Wisconsin. Right. Uh, something like that. I could see him coming back, coaching for a year or two. But to go and take a five-year, four-year, whatever-year contract at, at USC when you fucking were on there, and your wife is on there crying about brain cysts and things like that, which to me are serious fucking business and not to be joked about. I, I, I'd have a whole different view, man. 
I really would. Okay. Well, and and I know the Florida players, the Florida fans might already have that view. I don't. I think Urban has been a complete class act and a super competitive coach. That's record speaks for himself. On the flip side of that, I do see how if Urban went to USC, he would totally fucking dominate the Pac-10. Okay, <laughs> and he would yeah. get to the playoff. Uh, three, th- it, if he coached there for five years, I guarantee he'd be in the playoffs, three of them. Oh, yeah. And when you're in the playoff, anything can happen. And he w- he might end up winning in the national championship. And then can, can you imagine, he wins a national championship with a Pac-10 team, a Big Ten team, and an SEC team would be pretty sick. So I, I get that allure, but if, if we, I, I think Urban Meyer's honest. And so my take is that the system that is a real thing for him. If that's all bullshit, then I'm really disappointed. Don't feed me that line of bullshit. Just say, mm-hmm. l- like I said, I, I wish Urban Meyer would have quit when they were trying to put him through that shit. I'd had no problem with Urban Meyer quitting, and I would have still loved the guy. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, president. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, AD. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's my take. Yeah, I would definitely make a lot more friends around here if uh, Urban went on and coached somewhere else, but because uh, I could definitely identify identify with Florida fans and uh, their their uh, insistence that he's full of crap. Um, but I agree with you. Uh, brain cysts are not an excuse and not a uh, not something to take lightly. So I. Uh, I would say I wouldn't be surprised if he finds a way to, in a year or so, similar to coming to Ohio State, you know, taking a year off, working at ESPN. He, t- he takes this year off, goes out to Fox, which coincidentally is in L.A. You know, uh, he's hanging out with Reggie Bush and Matt Leinart on the set of uh, the Fox Game Day show. And I, I think he gets the itch. And he finds a doctor that can help manage this brain cyst. You know, the brain cyst is real. I'm I'm not disputing that it's that it's uh, made up, but I think you gotta. I think he finds a way to to build up another, you know, legendary program. But it would be short. That'll break my heart. That'll break my heart. Yeah. Imagine him and Chip Kelly in the same fucking town. Jeez. That rivalry would take on way different, way different look. I mean, yeah. I mean, Herb really looks up to Chip too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're good friends. Um, but I, I, I don't know how he stays out of coaching. At he's only fifty-five. Just had his birthday yesterday. I don't know how he stays out of coaching. He could do it ten more years easily. You know, look at Mac Brown. He just jumped back in the game. He's what? Yeah, but what what does Urban Meyer have to do? The guy. What does Urban Meyer have to do? He's already legend. It's filling that void, man. He's a fucking coach. A coach is a coach. uh, Nothing's going to replace that. Yeah, I mean, of course, nothing replaces that. But you're either. Honest with the shit or you're not, Herb. And mm-hmm. again, if they come out with some new grommet, would tell me Herb hasn't had the best fucking looking at his shit to control his whatever. Mm-hmm. Urban right. Myers had the best people on the planet looking at his shit. Yeah, definitely. I would agree. And, you know, maybe if, if in the next two years some new groundbreaking fucking technology comes out there, and that's possible, that could happen. Mm-hmm. And there's not a spot for for him at Ohio State because now we love Ryan Day. You think Gene Gene Smith makes that move? Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know how you waffle back to Herb and just tell Ryan Day as thanks. Especially if Ryan Day is successful, like I'm predicting him to go twelve and zero. 
That's because you're a homer. <laughs> I got my Buckeye binoculars on. 12 and 0. How many times did the Buckeyes went 12 and 0? 2012. Five. Yeah, twenty Herb's first year. So Day doesn't want to be outdone. He's like Herb's first year. He went twelve yeah. and zero. But I'm we, going twelve and zero. Except mine will actually be in the books. Yeah. Except mine will actually be yeah. in the books. We can actually go to a postseason game, right? I heard a great "What If" uh, article. Uh, I think it was on uh, Ozone, written by Tom Orr. This is a great "What If." Think about the dominoes that took place. After Tattoo Gate with Pryor and those clowns. So they could have, Gene Smith could have instituted a self imposed bowl ban for the uh, the Gator Bowl. Remember, we, we uh, do we play Florida? Who I forget who we played in that game. I know what you're we saying, lost. though. We could have, we could have self. The thing is, we thought we were going to be totally scot free and innocent. So how do you. How do you give yourself a ban if you think that you're fucking innocent? You know, it'd be well. You know, it's not that they thought they were innocent. It's they they got bad info from quote unquote sources at the NCAA, which were just just a person that they knew, which obviously had no insight into the situation. So they could have not played in that Gator Bowl where they lost anyways, the Luke Fickle year. They could have not played in that. That would have been their one-year bowl ban, which would have negated the 2012 bowl ban. And we could have taken a 12-0 and team into... That was in the BCS system. Don't forget that. We would have been one or two in right. the country, most likely. And we would have played Notre Dame, because that's the year Notre Dame played Bama, and Bama, Bama barely oh, got in. It was, not, it was not the Bama we know now. It was the year Bama barely got into that game. We would have fucking crushed Notre Dame. I don't care who the hell was on that team. That was the Manti Teo fishing fish hackers. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I also heard, uh, I was talking to Timmy the other day, and I heard Urban came out in some podcast that if he would have known that Ohio State was ineligible when he was like taking that job, yeah. He, he probably wouldn't have taken it. Yeah, that was the the podcast he's he's hosting with uh, Tim Kite, the um, leadership guru and self empowerment guy. Yeah, uh, that came out Wednesday. He he did say that he he said that uh, he took the job on the pretext that they were not going to get any NCAA sanctions. Um, then on top of the the uh, 2012 uh, postseason ban. They also got nine scholarship reductions over three years, so that that's huge. That's right. It's three per year. You know, that affects your your scholarship count and your recruiting, everything. But yeah, it was funny it to was think about that. It was a tough road to hoe, and I mean, what he did was what Urban did at Ohio State did nothing sort of miraculous. I don't think any other coach could have done it. He was the perfect hire at the perfect. Thank you, Urban Meyer. If you go to USC, then fuck you. Yeah, like they say, timing is is uh, one of the most important things, and uh, we got lucky with the timing there. <laughs> with Herb being available and willing to come back and coach. Yeah. That, that's just, it doesn't happen like that, man. We only had one subpar season in that whole stretch in the last 20 years. Yeah, that was that was our one percent out. Yeah, that was a one outer, and we nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Trestle took over in two thousand one. For you, what's that? Your one outer. That's a little poker reference. A one outer. Okay. We we hit the one outer with Urban Meyer. Yeah, we got lucky with the timing, but yeah, I I think we may get lucky again here with this Ryan Day hire. I do too, dude. I am so jacked on Ryan Day. I oh my gosh, I've got nothing but good vibes going towards Ryan Day. Can you imagine Ryan Day could make Urban Meyer, Woody Hayes, yeah, and Trestle like an afterthought. Like Ryan Day is 
is Ohio. Like thirty, yeah. can you imagine what is he? Thirty seven, thirty eight. Right. Go like a thirty year run at Ohio State with five, six national championships. Yeah. It's there. Do it. Yeah, I don't see any coach staying at a school for thirty years. That's just not not going to happen anymore. But I I could see him for ten, ten plus, and rattling off a few uh, two to three, and uh, see where it goes. I don't know if, if you're having if you're having crazy success at a a blue blood program. Why not? Mm-hmm. But the, but they don't tolerate, you know. 30 years, yeah, they're not going to tolerate like a, a four year stretch of bullshit. <laughs> no, if you think. You need to maintain. Yeah, if you think today's expectations are intense, imagine fucking 20 years from now. <laughs> you have a bad fucking right. four week stretch. Look out. You know, forget four years. If you have a bad month in the Big Ten, you, you might want to start packing up your office. Well, right now, I'm telling you right now, if Jim Harbaugh doesn't win this Big Ten this year, next year, the drums will start beating. It might not be that loud, and I'm not saying that if he had a, you know, a, an eight and four season after that, he'd be fired, but. Well, I thought Michigan fans wrote. There was wrote, an article uh, on Live that I read about that. Yeah. Well, I thought Michigan fans were, would be satisfied with 10 wins a year. They, they kind of are, frankly, and you know what? They're they're almost accepting their fate that Sparty's their rival. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like they almost are. Like, man, we can't to be a rivalry. You got to beat them every now and then. Yeah. Well, we went through this right with Cooper. Yeah. And that's what this article I read on M Live was about. Um, it was about John Cooper, and I think he was oh four and one before he beat Michigan, mm-hmm. something like that. Right. But at some point, you have to, and then ultimately, it was a demise because Cooper had some of the sweetest teams ever, and would never beat Michigan. Fucking kill me! But he ended up nine two nine two and one against Michigan, something like that. No, it was like one nine and one, maybe ten two and one. No, it's it like one oh, win. Oh, yes. I mean, that's a, I think it was one win and one tie. So, yeah. Sounds about right. But I, I, I thought Michigan was, I mean, where else are they going to go for a coach, dude? These people, they need, they, I'm sure they realize this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they're smarter than everybody else. Yeah, there's some truth in that. Yeah. So, just ask them. I know. Somebody had a good joke. <laughs> During that baseball, the college baseball playoffs, when it was Michigan versus what, Vandy, and uh, somebody said, "Yeah, these 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 two fan bases love to tell you where they went to school." <laughs> so, <laughs> no, well, you'll get a kick out of this. So, one of my uh, one of my buddies I know, he's got a kid that's like a junior, and he went on a uh, campus visit to Michigan. And his guide, you know how when you go to these campus visits, you get the guide that sure. walks you around and all that bullshit. And uh, it was during the it was during the baseball, so he gave him a little slack. But he's like, "Yeah, no, we're a baseball school." <laughs> okay. So, I mean, Sparty always falls back on, "Hey, we're you know basketball school." Right. Michigan took it deep this year, but I'm like, you know what? You guys can be good at basketball. I don't care. Michigan State and Michigan can be the two best teams in basketball for the next 20 years. I could care less. Yep. Enjoy it. How about football? Exactly. That's all that matters. I mean, it, it, yeah. It doesn't surprise me, though. It doesn't surprise me one bit. I just, I, I don't but know. No, I, I, I feel like Michigan, Michigan's getting this inferiority complex. Mm-hmm. Where all right, Sparty's now their rival, right? And Sparty's doing it with the thirtieth ranked recruiting class every year. Michigan's top ten, typically, and they're still not getting it done consistently against Sparty. You know, with the talent gap, you should be crushing Sparty. It shouldn't even be a rivalry. What are they five? What are they five hundred against Sparty under Harbaugh? 
Is it even that like, good? I think it's two and two with Harbaugh. Of course, they had that where their guy like was going to punt or kick and it was blocked and then returned for a touchdown in the last seconds. The punt, yeah. And they should Michigan should be three and one. But hey, that's the way it goes. That's, uh, the, that's tough fucking shit. rules. Tough fucking shit. And you know they. You got these guys that think that JT Bear didn't get that first down. Well, right. I beg to differ. Right. <laughs> Let's go back to the last 10 years. I got it right here. I got uh, 2009, Sparty with an overtime win. 2010, Sparty with the win at Ann Arbor, 34 17, not even close. 2011, Sparty with the win at home. Double them up again, 28 14. 2012, still pre Harbaugh. Keep that in mind. Pre Harbaugh. Uh, 2012, Michigan gets them in the Ann Arbor 12 to 10 in a barn burner. <laughs> 2013, Michigan State bangs them at home 29 6. Not even close. 2014, Michigan State crushes them at home again. For some reason, they went back to back East Lansing's that those two years. I don't know why. Weather. Oh, that's when we switched from the legends. That's when we switched from the legends oh, the and conferences. leaders divisions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what that was. But anyway, so smashed them again at East Lansing, thirty-five to eleven in twenty fourteen. Twenty while well, we were winning national championships. Uh, twenty fifteen, Michigan State. Wins in Ann Arbor, 27-23. 2016, Michigan wins 32-23 at East Lansing. 2017, Michigan State wins in Ann Arbor, 14-10. So you're looking at, and we know 2018, Michigan won 21-7 anyway. Uh, so going back to 20, 2009, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Sparty wins in 10 years. I'm not sure that's a yeah. rivalry either. <laughs> that's not a rivalry, man. We got to find somebody that Michigan is going five hundred against, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe Northwestern. That's impressive. Maybe App State. They're like five hundred with them, right? In the last <laughs> right. two decades, yeah. played them twice, beat them once, lost. Yep, times. one and one, home and home. Yeah, so, all right, so even if you go last seven years, you got three Michigan wins. You know, last five years, you got two. Yeah, but if you look at Sparty, like, uh, and I don't know, these are, like, always skewed because I'll be on these message boards, like, why don't you go back four years? But you go back three years, <laughs> Yeah. and Michigan State's, like, 500 team. Yeah. Last three years, Michigan State's 500. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'm surprised by some of these. But I think that's what you'll see with a team like them. Just from five years ago, Michigan State smashing them so badly. Jesus. 35 to 11, 29 to 6. Well, five, Michi- five years ago, Michigan State was for real. Right. They were ranked. At the time they played, uh, Sparty was 7, 8, and 22. They had that three-year stretch. They won every game. So, yeah, ranked in the top ten, back-to-back seasons will get it done. Michigan was number two in 2016. Number six last year. And they got their two wins. Interesting shit. Yeah, anything else you want to cover tonight? We uh, Did we hammer out Herb's uh-huh. future? Covered up. Yeah. Yeah, that motherfucker better not. We got the schedule all hammered out. But anyway, Herb, do a trip for you and your family. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to do that, then stop crying on TV and just do what the fuck you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You're an assassin coach, and I love it because you kill your rival. Mm hmm. I selfishly kill your program. Everything's selfish, of course. Kill your honor. Don't be assassin on your honor. <laughs> That's right. Don't assassinate your own honor. My Ayn Rand. 
Ayn yeah. Rand. Yeah. I selfishly don't want him to go, not because I, I care what he does with his life, but I don't want him taking Mick, Pantone, and Voltolini with him. He, he starts taking those core guys out uh, of the Ohio State program, yeah. we're fucked. There's no replacing those guys. That's a huge loss. Yeah, but you know what? Those guys have been there now for so long. Do you, do you think that they've, like, anchored to, like, hey, you know what, Herb? I'm good here, bro. It's possible, yeah. I mean, it's pretty nice here. Yeah, I mean, Coach Mick has a daughter at Ohio State, I believe. Um, Pantone's got a younger family, so you may not want to uproot them, you know, and go all the way out to L.A. I do hear that Shelly Meyer likes L.A., so, it, yeah, you could you could be right. I mean, but I don't know how Herb starts a program without any of those guys. That's why he went to Ohio State, because he could bring all of his boys with him, you know? They were all on a right. at the time. Was Pantone here? He brought in Pantone, or like yeah. that was like a year or two after, wasn't it? Pantone was a GA at Florida. I mean, I know, I know, Mix always followed Herb. Mm -hmm. He had Pantone at Florida. Yeah, he was a GA. Um, I think he worked in the recruiting uh, office. He, I'm pretty sure he came in day one with with Herb. I oh, did I tell you I met? Uh, um, Coach Mix, high school, or I mean, uh, college roommate at West Virginia. This uh, oh, this guy, oh yeah, this guy is a fucking gem. He had fucking stories. Oh my god, yeah. So I didn't know that Coach Mick went to West Virginia, but I I ended up googling it later. Yeah, he did. And uh, uh, they they were roommates and played ball together at at West Virginia back in the day. <laughs> Said so coach makes a good dude though. That's good. I mean, I, I, mean I, I think he's respected as the number one or number two strength coach in the country, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you hear about uh, Alabama's strength coach. I forget his name. Uh, Iowa's strength coach is supposedly a legend, and um, there's probably one or two more floating out there. But yeah. Yeah, mix mix the guy. He's always on the cutting edge of everything. Mix is a guy. You know, he gets that team ready every yeah, year. Yeah, nutrition, weightlifting. Mm -hmm. They are. I mean, you see those guys transform. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the one that's working with the team right now. I mean, I know these five star kids think they're ready. Yeah. Yeah, regular coaches can't even see them, right? No, like basically after you, you these five star kids come in. And then you can do or and after, like, yeah, make makes him a different dude. <laughs> yeah, those Josh Perry photos are like one of the biggest ones I remember of night and day difference. Yeah, he was soft, and then just came out rock, you know, fucking solid and and bigger. I don't think I ever saw any pictures of uh, uh, Weber. Oh yeah, he was all chubby and out of right. Detroit when he came in, and I mean Nick. Yeah, he became a rock. Yeah, he had that baby fat on him when he came in. Yeah, it took him a year, but yeah, and he increased his speed. He had to be. I can't imagine what his forty time was coming into Ohio State, but he had to shave like multiple tenths, tenths of a, a second off of his forty. I'm talking like if he ran a four five or four six, I bet you he was down to four four. I don't know what his numbers were. It's well, look what, look what Mick did with Hubbard. Oh, jeez, yeah. Took a fucking lacrosse yeah, player and made a now. D end out of him. <laughs> he plays for the Bengals. Yeah, he was a lacrosse player and a safety yeah. in high school. <laughs> fucking, yeah. Come over here, son. He's a D end in the league. Put your, put your hand in the dirt. How's that feel? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's good shit. That's one of those those stories, man. But he always had the frame, right? You see a big kid like that, yeah. like yeah, you're yeah. two twenty five in high school, but dude, we're gonna we get to two sixty five, two seventy. Yeah, no problem. 
Okay, we'll see what what happens. So yeah, Coach Mick has been alone with the guys since uh, the end of spring practice. So end of April until this point, camp open up, op- opens up uh, like end of July. We got Big Ten media days coming in next week. Um, we got a good group going there, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got KJ. Um, KJ might be my new favorite player this year. I always hated KJ. I love KJ. Oh, yeah. Great hands. Um, Going to break all of Chris Carter's records. Um, but I just, he gets so pissed off. He's like our yeah. When they start asking him some tough questions, he's able to grab a hold of somebody and fucking. He's pretty chill. They got Jordan Fuller and Jonathan Cooper also coming in. Fuller's pretty chill, well spoken. Cooper's cool. I like, I wish they would bring in some more exciting guys that I want to talk to. Like, like bring in fucking Chase Young. I know he talks a little ghetto, but I like that. Keeps it real. Um, bring in fucking Justin Fields. Let's talk to him. Bring in J.K. You know? Uh, I don't... I'm not with bringing in Justin Fields. Yeah, I don't know about this kid yet. He ain't been, he ain't been a Buckeye yet. Don't, these other guys have been Buckeyes. They represent mm-hmm. us. Justin Fields ain't never been a Buckeye. And you, you know... No, I'm not, I'm not with that at all. All right. You want to bring in some... Tough Borland or Demario McCall. How about Arnett? Thayer Mumford. Uh, Arnett, I think, is too fucking hard ass, man. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> Dude, I mean, let me ask me them. Go. Arnett will give you like Iverson questions. Practice? We're talking about practice. Right. <laughs> talking about the game, the game I love. That's right. Like, you, you know about practice? No, he'll start in on the refs and the and the PI calls. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was flagged for yeah, six yeah, flags. But, you, but but you have that dickhead reporter out there that says, "Hey, Arnett, you gonna turn your head around this year?" Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Arnett will fucking hop over that table and fucking yeah. body slam. <laughs> <laughs> Grab him by the tie. You talking about bitch? Yeah. Yeah, I could see him going gangster on on a fucking reporter. See, that's why we should have had our net there last year to, to protect Herb. We should have had like the roughest, meanest dudes on the team in there guarding Herb, and everything would have gone smoothly. Douche McMurphy wouldn't have fucking opened his his mustached mouth. Cops McMurphy. Him. Yeah, where's he? What been? a fucking whore! What's that guy fucking doing? Yeah, Herb's about to fucking take a $10 million a year job at USC, you cock. Way to fucking submarine his life, you dumb dick. Our like lives. you could ever. Our <laughs> fucking lives. My life is in shambles for the last year. I don't know which what way is up. What a fucking clown. Yeah. yeah he was trying to, maybe that was it. He wasn't after Urban Meyer. He was after Buckeye Nation. Yeah, well, fuck you. We'll prevail. He lives over here in Tampa. I, I have seen a photo of his house. Buckeye fans that live around here have, pr- have made some uh, less than great decisions. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, threats, good for them. Threats and oh, posting his his uh, address online <laughs> and shit. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, I'm not really for that. The yeah. Doxing people. Yeah, yeah. They'll say OH when they're punching him in the fucking face. Dot in his eye. But he's a real ass hat. Yep. So fingers crossed this year, nothing goes haywire at Big Ten Media Days for the Buckeyes. Anybody else, I don't care. You can cut off somebody's finger for all I care. But leave us the yeah, fuck alone. Yeah, Big Ten Media Days is where it all started. Exactly. That's where it all started, wasn't I know. it? Yeah. One year ago. Just leave Damn, us the fuck alone. One year alone. ago. Yeah. That's right. We're going to come and play football, and we're going to beat all of you. This season is a business trip. No revenge tours. No fucking guarantees. No T-shirts. How do you got us 12-0? and 0? 
with a brand new fucking quarterback and four new alignment. Talent, man. We are fucking deep. Deeper than the crack in your mom's pocket. Mm hmm. We roll deep. I hope. We I might hope be. You're right, but what if fucking. What if Fields is a fucking bum? And what if he has a. Like, he's a first time starter and has one of those games against a fucking wherever where he throws three picks? He's, he's probably gonna. He's gonna. That, he, he's gonna have that, yeah. I still, I don't think it's enough. I think the defense is going to be night and day different from last year. I think is we're not even going to re- remember last year. So they're going to keep us in some ball games. We're not going to get blown out at Iowa or by a, an, a score like Iowa. Somebody, you know, allowing 50 points or a Purdue. You know, we're not going to give up those 50-point games. We're not going to go wire Maryland, toe Maryland, to toe. But, yeah, we're not going to go, you know, an incomplete pass in overtime to lose to Maryland. Um, I, I just think the defense is going to keep us in games. Um, I realize this is more offensive focused game nowadays. Everybody's running the spread and and a lot of uh, uh, up tempo, but I, I think we're going to be in games and the offense has to run the ball consistently, number one. I think we can do that. And number two, get Justin Fields comfortable. And then early on, first half of the year, get him comfortable, let him get his feet wet, get his timing with the receivers. And then second half is where he shines. And we ride him a little bit more. And what if he gets hurt? Yeah, then uh, I think Gunnar Hoke comes in, and you think Gunnar Hoke's a backup? I think so. Uh, I know Chugs has been in the system for over a year, and Hoke's only been there for a few months. But I think Hoke is the the better talent. I I don't know. It, it would be a difficult choice, I'm sure. But I think Gunnar Hoke has, is the better upside. Well, uh, but can they do the same game plan unless? Oh unless no, they would. They would change. They doesn't, I mean, they can't. They can't run like like no one. No one on a roster anymore can mm-hmm. run like Fields. Sure, exactly. I agree. Uh, so yeah, and that's the thing with, that I like with Ryan Day, and this is Ryan Day versus Urban Meyer, in my opinion. Ryan Day will customize the offense to his players, whereas Herb is customizing the players to the offense. You know, he wants a running quarterback, Herb did, you know, period. Not until Ryan Day came in did they actually start winging the ball around and, you know, he they customized the offense to a Haskins, you know, and even JT right. to a certain degree. You know, they were bringing in some of those uh, mesh routes and crossing route concepts uh, year one for Ryan Day. So... So they did use JT's arm somewhat, you know, when the when they weren't running him twenty times a game. Uh, so I think that's Ryan Day's strength. He's going to customize the offense to Fields, and then if Fields goes down, you know, then he'll customize it to Chugs. Uh, I could understand Chugs being the go-to guy since he's been there so long, relatively speaking. I mean, um, so I, we'll see. And who's our young kid? And then we got another young kid in there. I uh, can't see it. We got two walk-ons. That's it. We got we got Gunner and Chugs and Chugs two, two walk-ons. Two walk-ons. Yeah. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Oh, I can't wait. Miller's coming in next year. Yeah. And. We're running out of options to bring in a second quarterback in next year's class. That's probably not going to happen. But I think going forward, starting 2021, you got to bring in two fucking quarterbacks with each class. Quarterbacks are prima donnas. The only way you're going to do that is you bring in a super stud, and then you bring in like a three-star that wants to be there. Yeah. Three-star high. I agree, yeah. That's exactly it. But now you see the NCAA tightening down this transfer portal you know, immediate eligibility crap. 
So we could be right back to pre-portal days where you didn't have the the fear of losing your quarterback if he didn't play his freshman year. You know, they're starting right. to tighten the screws on these kids. So um, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking in the this last 12 months with just letting, it's like the Wild West, just letting everybody go wherever and no repercussions, you know, as far as the quarterbacks go. Because uh, they did deny a couple of kids. I agree. They denied that that kid, remember the kid that transferred out of Michigan, wanted to go to Cincy? He got denied. He was, and he said that he had, uh, you know, depression when he was at Michigan, and like um, had some mental health issues. He got fucking denied. But anyway, and you're like, well, I mean, they just they just brought in a five star kid, so I know I'm never playing. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I, I think starting twenty twenty one, they're going to have to bring in two quarterbacks, and unfortunately, it's kind of burning, going to burn a, a, a scholarship because the kid's probably going to sit the bench for the second quarterback. You know. Just got to get the right kid. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just get a couple studs every year. And one transfers out every other year, which <laughs> keep getting two every year. <laughs> yeah. Hey, somebody's going to be our guy and somebody's not. Yeah. Yeah, I think the coaches have really pushed back over this past year, and the NCAA listened to them. And probably the the uh, ADs pushed back as well. It was getting, ridic- it was getting Fuck, ridiculous. Yes. When Tate m- transfers and is able to play, come on. It's insane. Right. I mean, every coaching staff loses coaches, assistants or head coaches, every year. you just going to let the whole fucking team transfer out and play immediately? Come on, man. I like Tate. I wish the best for him. I hope he starts this year for the Canes. I hope they go undefeated, but I know it's not going to happen. I'll be. In, I, I would like to see him play for sure. Yeah, and he's exciting. You know, plays a, a different style of a game, but you yeah, know, he'll bring some. Uh, well, we've never seen him throw a football, right? A very few, and they weren't good. <laughs> they weren't good. No. And that was his. Be- the whole beef they had back in the spring game there, and uh, down in Miami is a. Uh, that uh, his accuracy was way off. I remember seeing him throw a few in garbage time last year, and he just doesn't have the, the arm strength, you know, especially on deep balls, of course, um, and those out routes. He can't hit those those ten, fifteen yard out, you know, out cuts with timing, you know. But that was Herb's quarterback. I mean. That was his kind I of guy. I felt like they really loves him. Oh, Herb did, because Herb wanted to run him. Yeah. Anything else we need to cover tonight? We had a long one. <laughs> Looking at two-hour podcast. Like the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> no, yeah, I think that's it. See, uh, see you in a couple, whatever. Maybe, maybe something out of camp. Yeah. Raises our eyebrows. Yeah, uh, I'm sure nothing will go wrong at uh, Big Ten Media Days. I'm sure it'll be just another year, uh, back to normal, boring. Harbaugh will show up in his khaki suit and Michigan hat on. And we'll get to see Ryan Day. I'd love to see them go like 6-6. Six and six. Oh, yeah. Gosh, let Michigan go 6-6. Six and six. Yep. As long as we beat him, that's all that matters. Or six and six or eleven and zero until we play him, yeah. and let us hang sixty two on him again. Yeah. Run him right out of the fucking big house. Yeah, every other year we got this this habit of doing the uh, 
OHIO around Michigan Stadium. <laughs> we'll see if we can do that again. Oh, that'd be nice. Mm-hmm. So, all right, folks, you know what to do. Hit the website. Check out these shirts, man. Do it. Shirts and hats. We got more shit mm-hmm. coming up every day. Um, we will put the whatever. Do it. Yeah, all the profits go into the podcast. Pay for this thing. This thing isn't free, man. I've been paying for this thing on my own dime. About time I get something back. Uh, as always, follow us, tweet at us, send us your questions, comments. Uh, don't be afraid to uh, subscribe and download the show, then delete it and download the show again. And uh, leave us a, a nice five star review if, if you're so inclined. And why wouldn't you be? So, uh, this this far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. At this point, you might as well. You're not really hurting anything. Uh, This is the summertime. We're just trying to get through it. We got 50 days until fucking football. Seemed like just 50 days ago it was 100 days, but um, we're getting there. We'll come out with a show probably uh, around the, the beginning of camp. We'll talk about a two deep, and uh, maybe we'll talk about some freshmen that we think are going to get in a, crack the the rotation and and get on the field. So, all right, have a good one, Henry. Thanks for joining me. I will. Okay.